Hi, I'm Dr. Derek Lee, and it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Bourdalien Couvoisier, who is a pediatric spine surgeon and professor at the Grenoble University Hospital in Grenoble, uh, France. Welcome, doctor. Welcome. Thank you. It seems that your experience with bracing, um, you mentioned that maybe 20% of individuals get some correction. The vast majority uh, has uh, halts the curve progression, which is the original function of a bracing, external brace. But you have another 20% or so that the bracing fails. And you mentioned that that's where you see VBT uh, becoming the next step. When yeah. was your first exposure to VBT and when did you start to practice that and integrate that into your work? Um, actually, I started doing VBT, it was uh, in 2013. Uh, at first, it was only some case reports in, uh, in conference and Congress and uh, at first, I wanted to do that for um, actually not for uh, for growing spine, but uh, I was very uh, interesting in in stabilizing the flexible curves, and uh, particularly the toracolumbar ones, uh, very short ones that are very very flexible and sometimes very imbalanced. Um, that was my first idea, but. Uh, because at first I didn't understand very well the, the concept, um, but very, very uh, shortly after that, um, I, I, I showed the first publication and the first papers of, uh, of uh, Lenke and, and, uh, and, and Sam Danny and so on. Um, and uh, so that, that's, uh, that's how I, it all started. I was well, I like things that are not, that are a little bit out of the box. And so I, I always like to, to do things differently. <laughs> um, so that's why I started doing that. Uh, first, I started with, um, you know, in France, we didn't have anything uh, like, uh, well, we, we didn't have, we, 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 have, we had the, the, the Genesis system, we had things like this, but they were all off label. So it's, it was not possible to use them. And uh, actually I started, um, the first case I did uh, was, uh, was with the, um, a custom used of uh, the transition system, which was from Globus. Uh, it's, it's a little bit the equivalent of the Dinesis system. Um, but uh, once I used that, I was a little bit, uh, well, disappointed because it was a very big screws and I felt it's, wow, it's, it's too big. Um, so then for maybe one year, one year and a half, I started using um, a very custom uh, device. <laughs> it was the association of staples and um, a flat ligament. Uh, what we use, uh, what we call sublaminar bands, we use that for posterior fusion, and uh, the ligament was flat uh, in a still flat. It's uh, so it was very cool for the lung because uh, when you I put the staples on on the vertebral on the body vertebral body, and I put the 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 ligament under. It was very easy to do, uh, very low profile. So very cool, but it was not stiff enough. Um, so I used that for maybe six, six to eight cases. And that was the time I met um, Ahmed Alanai. And um, I was a little bit disappointed for, of, well, with my cases. So I started using screws and I used the Dinesis system. And that was in um, four years ago now. Well, now I use VBT. Well, at first I only used VBT for uh, growing spine. And um, because, you know, when you start with the concept, you need to have uh, the growth modulation. 
you need to see it to trust it. <laughs> uh, so I, at first, that was my uh, my idea of that is I. I I, I wanted to have the, the 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 growth modulation, so I only started with with growing spine. So once it happened, uh, so that was cool. <laughs> uh, so I I well for the first year I I only used that for a uh, growing spine, but once you're very familiar with the technique, uh, what you want is uh, extending the indication uh, and in my practice now um, there is still um, a big place for a uh, growing spine and it's uh, it's what I like to do because I know it's where it works uh, and it works very well but what I'm trying now is using the same technique for uh, stabilizing um, flexible curves. So the idea is since there is still flexibility in the curve, I want to keep it. And uh, if it's stiff, it's stiff. But if it's flexible, uh, I want to keep the flexibility. So that's why I'm using this technique in older patient now. Well, I'm still, I'm, I'm only doing um, pediatrics. So it's not like adults or um, it's, but I, now I'm, 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 my indication, I have extended the indications to 14, 15, 16 years old patients that are flexible. So in my head, um, if I have a lumbar curve, which is flexible, and uh, actually most of our patients below, before uh, 17 years old, they are all flexible in the lumbar spine. Wow, <laughs> most of them. And, um, and I use that also for, uh, for double curves. Sometimes, um... Well, surgeons, when they become more experienced, like you said, will expand their parameters. Um, and one of the, I guess, a small controversy regarding uh, tethering more mature spines is that if there's lack of uh, bone growth modulation, if the tether ruptures, what's going, to, what stops the curve from moving back to the original angle, right? Do you have a perspective on that? Well, I, I don't know if it's a big deal. Um, actually, um, if the cord breaks, uh, it won't break at every level. Um, and I, I still don't know if there is, I, I'm sure that, that there is not, the, the gross modulation is not, um, it's better if you have gross, of course. But I'm not sure there is no uh, bone remodeling after uh, such surgery, even in older patients. I'm not sure. It's it, it. I mean, if you brace your leg today and it will, they put a nail on your tibia, you, well, you will have bone remodeling. If you start if you stop walking for one month, then your bone will be completely transparent. That is. Um, the bone is something that is 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 uh, is is, uh, is a tissue. It's not a, like a rock. Uh, it's 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 moving. It's changing, and um, it's changing uh, if the the forces on it are are different. It's 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 bone remodeling, and we know that very well. So the problem is. Um, in older patients, this bone remodeling will probably occur, but more, uh, well, slower than if there is growth. And yet we don't know very well if it happens or not. Nobody, <laughs> uh, because nobody has um, 10 years or 20 years follow up after, the, after that technique, especially in older patients, but um, 
I feel it's not a big deal. If you, the, the problem is not uh, if it's working or not. The well, yes, it is. But um, I feel if if uh, if the patient is aware of what will probably happen or may happen, that's not a, a problem. Most of the patients they they want something that is mobile and not e irreversible. I mean, if 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 in the future. Um, I mean, for a lumbar curve, well, if the cable breaks at, well, five, well, 10 years after the surgery, it's still possible to change the cable. That's not always that easy to go back on, on the surgical site, but it is still possible. And we can imagine that in the future, um, maybe we will have um, different uh, medical device that will possibly be better in the uh, in um, well, in many ways, <laughs> um, but well, um, I don't know if it's a big deal. Uh, if 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 uh, twenty years after down the road, if if you do a fusion, uh, that's not a big deal at all. Uh, well, they they have the two options, but you actually now the the the, the technique and is is a lot less invasive, uh, so. That's why, that's what drives the patient um, today. Absolutely, they want to maintain flexibility and options as long as possible. If the flexibility is there, uh, well, it is to, it, it is possible, and if it's possible to keep it, uh, well, in my head, it's, well, I really don't like anymore to do a fusion in the lumbar spine. It, it's, uh, yeah. It's, it's a lot demanding for me. Uh, I know that sometimes it's necessary because, and some patients they don't want. I give the two options. I say, oh, uh, you, you, well, you're close to maturity now. Well, you have two options. The first option is that if you want to keep the spine flexible, you can have this, but there's a possibility of cord rupture and so on. But, uh, and you have the conventional technique. It's, uh, very close uh you will have a better correction maybe not but it's well fusion is an option but uh i give them uh the the two options and that's what is important for um for surgeon i think that you are doing vbds that they are offering different options and not only fusion and we talk to our patients, and I think now that uh, when I talk, I'm talking to other other surgeons that are doing VBD, uh, well, it's changing uh, the way we think the scoliosis. And I feel we have, uh, well, it's not like fusion, fusion, fusion. It's more, well, okay, we have different options uh, to give you. So you... Well, the patient is in the conversation now. And I feel that's very important. And sometimes uh, well, patients, they would say, oh, no, I, I, no, I just want fusion. I know it's a good treatment for 10. Well, we have 20, 30, 50 years old of uh, be, be behind us uh, of, of follow-up. So that's good. I, I want that. And actually today, it's, uh, it's a very, very good option for um, I mean, for, for thoracic curves, rigid ones, uh, if you do selective fusion, it's perfect because most patients they're doing well after. So, well, I'm, I have a, I, well, I, I've done a lot of fusion, but now it's, it's uh, I, and if you, actually today, the, the, it's more difficult to have different options in your head than just only fusion. And uh, it's, it's, it's always the same in life. If you have different choices, it's, it's, you need to choose. Uh, so for the patient and for the surgeon, if you only say, well, fusion is the, is the only option and I, I'm doing that very well, that's not a problem, but you just, well, it's easy for the surgeon uh, and for us now and for me, I feel it's uh, sometimes I'm, well, I'm, I'm saying, well, I'm, I give the two options, but uh, I don't know if the two options are uh, equivalent, uh, but I give that to the patient.
I, I give my doubts to the, to the patients and I, I, I give that and I, I just say, well, you have to, uh, you have these two options, just choose. But I, well, I help them, but uh, it's, uh, well, most of the patients, when they have the two options, they, they, uh, they choose the mobility motion. Right. Now, speaking of mobility, um, I'd like to just hear about your perspective on, you know, stiffer spines. Yeah. Because some surgeons will do uh, their form of uh, disc release, maybe yeah. ALL release as well, in terms of trying to increase flexibility. Do you have enough perspective on that for thoracic, even lumbar discs? Uh, I don't do any disc release. I did uh, once or twice, but I was, a, well, not that uh, convinced it was a good option. Uh, I mean, if it's stiff, it's stiff. <laughs> uh, so you can do disc release. Um, it, it will help if, if, you, if you cut in everything, that, that probably will um, allow more mobility. But the problem is to keep that mobility after, uh, once you've done that, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure you will, it will not fuse at the end. Uh, well, I know, I know, I know the, the, the surgeon, surgeons that are doing that, but, um, and they have very, very nice corrections, but the problem is uh, what will happen at the end. Um, actually, I'm more interested now is in, um, in combining fusion in, and VBT. Uh, like, but it's not that easy. Um, I, I feel, uh, well, as I told you, lumbar curves, they all before, I mean, before 17 years old, they are all flexible, mostly. It's, so it should be possible to have uh, a cable there and a fusion on, uh, on uh, selective fusion on the thoracic curve. The hybrids. I it's 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 um, well. I I know people are doing that now. Uh, some surgeons. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about um, choosing the right levels for uh, for fusion and for VBT. So now I I prefer doing uh, both curve with VBT or a cable whatever. And then if it's not working well with that, then I will do fusion on the thoracic spine in the, in, in, in the second um, surgery. Because once you have done the VBT, then it's, you're all derotating things, it's, it's different. So the, the, neutral, um, the neutral vertebras, the way you choose the, the levels of fusion are maybe not the one that you could have uh, predict before. So I'm, I'm, I'm not that, um, well, I'm not that sure it's, it's so easy to start with the fusion on the thoracic spine and do VBT on, on the lumbar curve. It's, um, well, maybe we'll have more uh, follow-up of, on those uh, patient, patients that are been open that they had some patients that they had surgery with that but with that technique but we don't have any follow-up on that well that's very interesting though because you do a tether maybe for the double curve you see how the spine reacts maybe if it comes to fusion you spare quite a few levels i still have those patients i I've, at first i i, I i'm I sh well i see i am one or two patients with i did the the, the two curves um, but the thoracic curve is not that perfect now. Uh, the, the lumbar one is nice. It's perfectly straight. So you, I've changed a uh, double curve uh, to, um, to a single thoracic, which is completely different because if I now need to do a fusion, I will do a fusion only on the thoracic spine, which is very, very different. Uh, and 
This is also um, what I, this is the way also I use VBT sometimes because uh, VBT, you, you have in some curves, a better correction at the bottom. I mean, on, on the lower thoracic spine. And um, some, for some patients, I say, okay, maybe it's TIFF, but it's not yet the time to do fusion. So I do a VBT, but uh, what I, my objective is to uh, avoid the, um, uh, the involvement of the lumbar spine. So to keep the spine, the, the, the curve only thoracic. And then if it's not good at the end, you, well, you will have a fusion, but only on the thoracic spine. And that will, uh, finally, the idea is to, uh, to, <laughs> to avoid fusion in the lumbar spine. Uh, if you stop in the L1, well, there, there is no big deal. It's, it's a good, very, very good operation, very good surgery. Doctor, uh, would you like to share some of your VBT cases? Yes. Uh... While you search for that, uh, do you have a, how many um, VBTs have you, have you done over the last, uh, I guess, four years? More than, uh, well, we've, uh, <laughs> uh, it's more than 100. Uh, actually now it's like, why well, it's because I, I, I do a lot, uh, a lot of patients that are not coming from Grenoble, but from all over France. So my, uh, recruitment is not, uh, local it's, uh, national wide. So I do now between 30 and 40 per year. Uh, so it's, it's like this. This is a man. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So now uh, I've done a lot of things, <laughs> and that's why I I I I, I like to show you uh, these uh, slides because I know well in my practice, I know what's good and uh, what is not that that good. <laughs> uh, the perfect case for me is this. It's a lanky one A, so a perfect thoracic curve, a short one, and that's important. Uh, balance, um, and I use, uh, I still use Riser. Um, I know most of my colleagues, they use Sanders uh, now, but it's, sometimes I feel it's too complicated. Um, so I use the Riser and the TRC. Uh, and for me, the ideal case is, is um, uh, a well-balanced short thoracic spine uh, curve, uh, Riser zero and TRC closed. And this is what we have. Um, this is one of my first case. Um, well, it was early in, um, in uh, 2018. So you see uh, a, a short one, Riser zero, TRC closed. This is the first X-rays. At first I was very, very, um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't trust too much the, the cable. So all my patients, they, 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 they <laughs> They, um, they were braced inside the OR, uh, <laughs> um, but now it's, well, I know it's, it's, it's not necessary at all. That's why the, the patient here at the first X-ray, uh, the first direct X-rays at day three, uh, she had the, the, the brace, but well, you see the, the embrace, uh, the, an embrace uh, X-rays, but without any correction. You see that the brace is not closed here. Um, this is just for protection. But this is the patient with two years and a half after the, the, the initial sur surgery. And you see, um, well, you see that screw, which was very horizontal. And she's, uh, the, 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 the screw is, um, is a little bit divergent now here. And uh, there is a very small uh, correction, but you have gross modulation. And what you see also is that the upper thoracic curve correct also. So this is for me the perfect case. Uh, it's four incisions, uh, one hour and a half surgery, three days of uh, in, in 
hospital and after that there is no no brace no fusion and we have the follow-up she's risa five now there is no big deal now it's it's over so well that's the perfect case and i uh, that's uh, that's the case um i need to do a, a two surgeries on that uh, on that patient this the this is the device i used and i show i i told you before uh with staples uh and uh, there is a flat ligament here at first it she was perfectly straight after the surgery but the problem with this this uh device well the the flat ligament is that it's too uh uh, it's not stiff enough. Uh, so uh, she had another curve here. And so I, I removed the staples and I put screws. Uh, it's, uh, it's my first Dinesis cases. Uh, and uh, what you see is that she's now, well, perfectly straight after two years. Uh, and uh, what is cool is, uh, well, the lateral view is not changing too much, but what you see is that, that's why we do that. Uh, she has, she's, uh, she's a very pretty girl. She's tall, she has a normal back. <laughs> uh, so that's why, why we, we do that. Um, a similar curve. What you see is that sometimes there is no, uh, there is not a lot of uh, gross remodeling after the surgery. It's only stabilizing the spine. But two years after she's twenty, she was forty-five. Well, there's no big deal at all. She's like this. <laughs> so uh, what 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 we need to 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 tell to our patient is that the the rib ump is not uh, decreasing a lot with VBT. Uh, another case, uh, 45 and she's 10 now. She's at the end of, of well, she's, she's skeletal maturity. And you see the lateral view is not changing that much. Um, and this is another case. So what you see here is uh, she had gross remodeling and gross, um, so she's very straight on the part of the spine that was um, instrumented. But what you see is there's still a counter curve here uh, at the lumbar, um, at the lumbar uh, spine. Well, that's not a big deal. Sometimes what I, what I do is when there is a, um, a small curve in the lumbar spine, I do a brace. I brace them uh, with a short brace, a nighttime brace, uh, just to avoid any uh, any progression of the lumbar curve. Uh, another one. And a nice one too. She's just only one year after the surgery. But what you see is that was a, a double one. And I did only, uh, I did a selective uh, VBT. <laughs> so, well, sometimes it's, uh, well, that was uh, my choice at that time. And uh, finally, it's, it's okay. Uh, because what you see, she was, she was very unbalanced just after the surgery. But what you see is six months after, she's completely well balanced. And what you see one year after the surgery, she's, uh, she's better. She had some gross remodeling. If you see the the, the screws, they are, um, they change uh, their direction. So it's, uh, and she, she's close to skeletal maturity right now. So she's perfect. And you see the chest, uh, the chest is uh, very symmetrical. Yeah. So that's cool. When it's working like this, that's perfect. Uh, and when we start doing VBT, what we said at first was uh, it's important to have the TRC open. And actually, it's not that good because you what you see here um, is that uh, it's working too well. Uh, it's like this now, <laughs> three years after the surgery. 
So you have overcorrection if you operate, if you do surgery too early. But, uh, well, it's not a big deal also if you have minus 10 or minus 20 at the end. It's still a small curve. But uh, now we know that we need to wait a little bit uh, until TRC is closed. Well, if it's possible to wait, because sometimes the, um, the curve is progressing a lot and it's not possible to wait. And I prefer dealing with an overcorrection than dealing with the 80 or a 90 degree curve. Uh, but she's like this. And that's cool. And this is, uh, this is a very cool case also. What you see is um, she, she had a big curve, but TRC open. And what you see that is two months after the surgery, she, I, I saw her very late, uh, well, that was one month ago. And she's uh, improving her correction, but she still have growth remaining. And what you see here uh, is overcorrection at the lower part. So what I need to do now is to cut the cord here. But uh, she was uh, she had a very big curve at the first uh, on on the first uh, the first it raised and she, you see the the trunk is rebalancing and she's uh, she, well she's perfectly okay and uh, there is no the problem now is not to know if it's working or not the problem is to know when to do the surgery that's all but well. Today, the, pro the most surgeons, they, well, some surgeons are still skeptical about uh, VVT, but there's, <laughs> well, there's no problem now. The problem is not to, to know if it's working or not. It's work, working very well, maybe too well sometimes. The, the problem is a uh, very long curve and uh, unbalanced one. Uh, I've done things that, that were not good uh, particularly here, uh, she was too imbalanced and my, uh, my construct was too short. So we need to, if, if we want to deal with those curves, it's possible, but the construct needs to be, um, uh, longer, longer in the lower part. Uh, but it's when it's long curve and, and imbalance, that's not that easy. But it works sometimes. It looks like this this one, and it's L2. Uh, I end up in like L2, a little bit lower than, than in, uh, in usual thoracic curves. And she's doing very well. Finally, the problem is really not to know if it's working or not. It's uh, now a problem of... of um, of indications, knowing when uh, to do VBT. And, uh, and well, and it is uh, changing a lot the way we think scoliosis now. <laughs> Question for you, do you have some surgeons are doing uh, double tethers to try and reinforce? Are you doing that as yet or? Well, actually, no. Uh, I've done it twice. Uh, I feel if... the problem is that it's not, uh, it's changing a little bit the, the surgery. Uh, it's not uh, really mini, mini invasive surgery if you need to put two screws on a single vertebra. You need actually, they're doing that on the lumbar side, on the lumbar part. And you need to remove uh, the, the, the psoas. And uh, that's not minimal invasive. And I feel it's, it's not that easy uh, because you need to put two screws. So you need to have two small screws. I don't know. Uh, I know Trobish and Alan and I, they are doing that, uh, Trobish a lot. Uh, but um, well, in my practice, I just put one. <laughs> is it so? If you're using one screw in the lumbar spine, uh, how does that 
so how does that work in terms of the psoas muscle? You, are you able to kind of move that out of the way or do you have to? No, I put the screw through the, through the psoas muscle. I, I, you know, I divide the, the psoas is easily, um, it's, it's quite easy to divide. So I put the screw uh, within the, the psoas. So if it's a double, double screws, then we have to actually physically move the psoas out of the way. Yes. Uh, it's because the psoas is uh, it's completely glued on 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 uh, it, it sticks to the vertebra, so you need to uh, to uh, wow well, you, you need to do a, a, a wide dissection of, of of the psoas if you want to uh, to put two screws that's necessary if if you don't do that that's technically technically very very demanding so you need to do a very uh, important surgery. I mean, it's not, I, I'm not saying that it's not, uh, well, for those who are doing that, well, it's okay. But for me, I feel it's, it's changing the way I, I, I think the surgery. I, I, I want to keep it a, uh, simple. And actually we are uh, working with um, one of my surgeon um, uh, is a, a neurologist uh, and is uh, is very familiar with dealing with the um, the kidney, uh, and is doing um, what we call retroperitoneoscopy. Uh, that means is uh, is doing small, very small incisions, and he puts is uh, we we do in, in insufflation. Uh, in in the um, uh, between the the abdominal sac, well, the 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 I mean the we put air below the the diaphragm. No, yeah, yes, and uh, it it create it, it creates um, a cavity, and like the cavity we have when we do thoracoscopy. The problem is we don't have the ribs. So if you lose the insufflation, then it's collapse. So, but it's very interesting. In, we did three cases like this, but you just have very, very small incisions. So that's cool, but uh, that's, not, it's, that's not easy at all. And, uh, well, it's for the, the two screws you have. Um, well, if you do L2, L3, and L4, that's that could be interesting to do that through uh, through retroperitoneoscopy. That's that could be a nice way to uh, to put screws. But if you have to put two screws per vertebra, it's 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 very tricky. A follow-up question I have is that um, sometimes one of the symptoms, ongoing symptoms after um, uh, lumbar tethers, it has to do a lot with the psoas in terms of, um, you know, nerve pain, uh, mm. maybe hot and cold with a sympathetic parasympathetic system. Mm. Do you find that with uh, the one screw, you tend to have less complications like that? Uh, actually, we don't have less. Um, we don't have psoas pain, but what we have is, um, is, uh, and, and it's very typical from this, uh, this approach is, um, you have, um, uh, the genitofemoral nerve, which is, um, crossing L3. Uh, well, it's crossing L3 in the psoas. So if you put, well, <laughs> If you remove a little bit the psoas, if you put a screw uh, above or close to this nerve, it's very, very small spaghetti, a very, very small one. So it's, it's well, practically constant that we have problems with that nerve. But, um, and uh, we did, an, uh, I have two students, they did, um, uh, a cadaver lab and um, anatomic um, study, and they very they in the, in the identified that nerve that is very very small. And uh, now what I try to do is um, 
well, just um, moving it very smoothly just to put the screw and avoiding, well, to damage that. And what we do at, for every patient, they, they have uh they have medication for uh, after the surgery um we we uh what we what we do is um is gabapentin maybe that is is uh is a uh, medication for the nerves and we keep it for two months after that surgery and uh usually we have full recovery of uh, even even if there is um, if the nerve is a little bit damaged, I mean not a little bit stressed, but not cut, but a little bit damaged, we have a full recovery at, at the end. But it's come, sometimes it's quite long; it's two three months after the surgery. But yes, it's not not that simple. Uh, I mean, thoracic spine is okay, no big deal after the surgery. Usually it's two, well, three days after the surgery, they're out of the hospital. But, um, well, when we do the lumbar spine, it's not that simple. Uh, just one final question. Uh, in terms, if you look into your crystal ball into the future, mm -hmm. what do you anticipate as the future of scoliosis treatment? Well, uh, <laughs> Um, well, I feel it's something like, um, well, if, if we'll still deal with surgery or something like this, I feel someday we won't have any screws. And what I have in my mind is something like, uh, you know, some, a small metallic ball you put in the, in the spine and you can program the correction with the alignment of something that you put in the vertebral body, <laughs> something like this. Uh, well, I feel we'll have some, the more we'll go, um, uh, the more we'll know about scoliosis, the less uh, it will be invasive. Well, the treatment will be invasive. I feel we are going minimal invasive, minimal invasive, and it's, and it's a good, good way Okay. To, uh, to treat scoliosis. So, uh, well, I hope in the, the first thing, I mean, if, the, if we want to do it well, the first thing is first uh, to have a good screening of scoliosis. If we, as I told you, if we treat the patient early, well, today we have good options to, uh, to avoid fusion at the end. But if we, if we talk about the evolution of medical device, which is very complicated right now in Europe and in the US. It's the, the regulation process are very, very, very tough. So I hope we will have evolutions and new things, but um, the, for, for most of the patients now, uh, the best thing is to to know they have scoliosis. If they don't know, they don't come. <laughs> and if they don't come, they don't have the good treatment. Early so, early detection. Yes, early detection. For me, it's the it's the most important thing. It's the key. It's the key. After that, if the, if if everybody is has a good screening. Well, then we will talk about uh, new treatments and so on. But uh, the, the screening is the, is the most important thing because, well, in fact, we are not that bad now. We, it's uh, changing a little bit. So we have, well, the next five years will be rearranging the indication of uh, VBTs and fusions and so on. But uh, I don't... I don't see new device coming on the market within the next 10 years because the, evol the innovation is, is difficult to, uh, to put on the market. Okay. And, uh, and I feel also 
I don't know if it's very politically correct, but um, I feel also we have a, a, an important lobby of, 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 uh, of companies that, uh, that, that are pretty interested in, uh, in putting screws in the back. <laughs> Uh, so we we need to change the way also the companies are are thinking the treatment of patient with colitis. Excellent. Thank you, sir, so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for your invitation. That was cool. Okay, learned a lot, and um, have a great evening. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much.